may we have the students, the beneficiaries under the scholarship initiative for less privilege on the stage? This initiative was an initiative one Uma started about half a decade ago. And alhamdulillah, some of the alumnus, some of the students who have graduated from primary and secondary school under the uh, under their tuition being paid by one Uma are here. And some of the students also benefiting from this initiative are also here to spur their hearts to us about their experiences and how the little, the huge, all of us here and those that are not here have contributed has helped to change their lives. We are going to be starting, inshallah, with a presentation with a poem that will be rendered by Awa. Awa is one of the beneficiaries of SILK. And Awa is currently one of the schools we have our students, which is Gifted Scholars Academy in Jukwe. So Awa will render, will come out and speak to us, and we also have other presentations. May I invite to the microphone one of our students to render the poem in Arabic. His name is Zakaria, and uh, he's one of the beneficiaries of the scholarship initiative for the last two years. Malam Zakaria, come to the microphone. <coughs> السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اسمي زكريا شمس الدين أنا طالب من مدرسة أكاديمية العلماء الموهوبين والإسلامية موضوعنا اليوم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل المعنى تفويض الأمر إلى الله وتوكل عليه والثقات بوعده والرضا بصناعه وحسن الظن به وانتظار الفرج منه من أعظم ثمرات الإيمان وأدل صفات المؤمنين وحينما يطمئن العبد إلى حسن العاقبة واعتمد على ربه في كل شأن يجد الرياعة والولاية والكفاية والتأييد والنصرة لما ألقي إبراهيم عليه السلام في الناد قال حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل فجعلها الله عليه بردا وسلاما ورسولنا صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه لما هددوا بجيش الكفار وكتائب الوثنية قالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسكم سوء واتبعوا رضوان الله واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو الفضل العظيم إن الإنسان وحده لا يستطيع أن يضارع الأحاديث ولا يقوم الملمات ولا ينزل الخطوب لأنه خلق ضعيفا عاجزا إلا حينما يتوكل على ربه ويثق بمولاه ويفوض الأمر إليه وإلا فما حيلة هذه العبد الحقير الفقير إذا احتوشت المصائب وأطار الدين النكبات وعلى الله فليتوكلوا إن كنتم فيا من أراد أن يسيح نفسه توكل على القوي ذي القوة المتين لينقذك من الولايات ويخرجك من الكربات واجعل شعراك وجتارك حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل فينقل مالك وكثر دينك وجفت مصادرك وشقت مصادرك حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل وإذا خفت من عدو أو رعبت من خط فهاتف حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل وكفى بربك هاديا ونسيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله
Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please who wants to help us with this application? Sisters know everything. So, our sisters, alhamdulillah. We have another student of ours here that will be helping us with uh, the interpretation. And her name is Khadija. So, speak to us in English language, interpreting what you have just rendered in Arabic language. Adia Khadija, please come to the microphone. <laughs> السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Khadija Alashangi from the first class of the Yemi and Islamia. Allah alone is sufficient for us, and He is the best disposer of our affairs. By leaving your affairs to Allah, by depending upon Him, by trusting in His promise, by being pleased with His decree, by thinking favorably of Him, and by waiting patiently for His time, you reap some of the greater fruit of faith. Display the more prominent characteristics of the believer. When you incorporate these qualities into your character, you'll be at peace concerning the future because you will depend on your Lord for everything. As a result, you will find care, help, protection, and victory. When Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was thrown into the fire, he said, Allah alone is sufficient for us, and He is the best disposer of our affairs. Thereupon, Allah made the fire to be cool. Safe and peaceful by the Rahim. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions were threatened by the impending attack of the enemy, they said, "Allah alone is sufficient for us, and He is the best disposer of our affairs." Quran three verse one and sixty four. They returned with grace and bounty from Allah. No harm touched them, and followed the good pleasure of Allah. And Allah is the owner of the all bounty. No person by himself is capable of fighting against the current of misfortune. Nor can he fend off the blows of disaster when the strike. This is because man was created weak and fragile. However, when in times of difficulty, the believer places his tendency and trust in his Lord. He knows that every difficulty can be overcome. All you who wish to be sincere to yourselves, depend upon your Lord, the Almighty, the all rich to save you from calamity and disaster. Live your lives according to this passage. Allah alone is sufficient for us, and He is the best disposer of our affairs. If you have ligaments, or if you are deep in debt, or if you are in any kind of worldly difficulty, call out, Allah alone is sufficient for us, and He is the best disposer of our affairs. If you face your enemy and are alarmed, or if you fear the misdeeds of the oppressor, say aloud, Allah alone is sufficient for us, and He is the best disposer of our faith. Quran 25 verse 31 says, But sufficient is your Lord as a guide and helper. Thank you. Indeed, <coughs> sufficient is Allah for all of us as a guide and as helper. The third person that will be speaking to us is one of those who have benefited from the scholarship initiative for less privileged under the umbrella of one Oma. And uh, now currently an undergraduate. May I invite to the microphone, Brother Hamza. Indeed, hope is not only without your complete trust in Allah. I was once like him. I am Abu Bakr Hamza Kanda, a proud school politician. Today, I stand as a biochemistry student at Treasure University of Congo. Silk wasn't just a financial aid, it was a lifeline of support, membership, and resilience. Today, as we convene at the One Umatu and Unity Conference, remember that your generosity changes life. Thanks to the Muslim Ummah, your help means the world to me. Jazakumullahu khairan. We did not say Amin to his prayer. Another beneficiary also of the SIP uh, initiative is our brother Tijani. Brother Tijani, you are invited on the microphone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa My name is Tijani Muhammad Zanturi and I'm from the DVD Zornesco. There are one of my scholarship for the less privileged made a significant impact in my life. After leaving my father's day of 13, one of my scholars was 
the area is focused on my education and after that I completed my secondary school. I moved on to pursue a bachelor's degree in information technology in Karakas University. I won the most scholarship for the less digital to see less best scholarship with the beauty of hope. My life and my story is a living truth that the support that is made in this one in my scholarship for the less digital changed the life of people from bad to better. And inshallah I'm living with my brothers and sisters to please help us continue in the in ensuring the hope of life of people like me. Thank you one Umar for writing my story. No Amin again. Amin and one of our students, our young folk that will be speaking to us is Awa. And Awa is a student of Southfield College. I stand before you with the message, Ikra, read. Read in the name of the Lord of the world, read. I dream of a world where dreams fly like birds in the sky, where dreamers can become achievers. But this is merely my dream. My dream of a world where the love of learning is instilled in our hearts. But this is merely my dream. An illiterate man sat in the cage, Hera, thus revealed the message of Islam which started, Ikra, three. The first word in the book of our Lord, Ikra, three. So tell me, is education not an obligation? Your erudition should be in line with your religion. There cannot be any contradiction. The emphasis put on knowledge in Islam is to the point the Prophet said, the ink of a scholar is holier than the blood of a martyr. A martyr, the people who die for Islam, if the ink in my book is holier than their blood, who am I to read education as an obligation? From spring to winter, in all the different seasons, learn for the right reason. The single most powerful seed lies at your fingertips, don't you dare let it see. If the father of mankind gained the respect of the angels through knowledge, who are we to refuse it? Knowledge is power, the key to those in both worlds. The education you seek is not just what is in here, it is not what you hear, but you lie in here. Because knowledge is from heart to heart. Just know this, we all can rise to knowledge. This presentation is a presentation of hope, a promise of a better future for those whom Allah has tested. And to everything we've acquired, to everything we have today, as Muslims we know it is just a gift from our Lord. In Surah to Rahman, Allah asked us 22 times, Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? There are things we do that is as a result of our own actions. But due to our inactions, members, participants, beneficiaries of scholarship initiative for the less privileged were orphaned without any recourse to their own personal acts. And what can we do to give them a better life than to make them go through school? To give them an investment that can never be taken back. If you give someone a car, you can take your car back. If you give someone a trillion naira, you can take it back. But the only thing once given cannot be taken back, it's knowledge. The only thing in countries where you see prosperity, just check. It is their level of education. The more educated you are, the more advanced your community becomes. A country like Singapore has absolutely no mineral resources. They do not have oil. The only thing they export in Singapore is education. Their people are skilled. Their citizens are good. Don't we know that the future of Islam 
and the future of Nigeria lies solely on the shoulders of children like them. Whatever we decide of them becomes what Islam becomes, and whatever we decide of them becomes what Nigeria becomes. So an investment in them is not just an investment in them as themselves, it's an investment in the generation coming coming up. And that generation is also a contribution to our own children's generation, our grandchildren's generation. And there is nothing we can do than for us to play our role, no matter how little, no matter how minute it is, to see that these children are schooled. If we check, according to reports here from the SILPA program, school fees per session for any of the child is between the range of 30,000 naira per term. So that means in a year, they only need 90,000 naira for us to enroll them in school. And we've seen Brother Hamza, we've seen Brother Tijani, both of them are undergraduates now. There was a time they had absolutely no hope. But Alhamdulillah, through contributions from people like you during the Peace and Unity Convention, outside of the Peace and Unity Convention, they are currently undergraduates. Imagine if we are able to move from the current number we are now by 500. If we are able to move from the current number we are now to a thousand, the more life we touch, the more lives we touch now, the better Islam becomes and also the better our country, our continent, and even the entire planet also becomes. It is on this note that the major anchors of the scholarship initiative for the less privileged came up with the SILP alumni network. It's a network of all the beneficiaries from this particular scholarship initiative to continue to bond even after they finish school. They bond together, they work together, and they see how to improve themselves together because most of them have been challenged in a way we can't even imagine. Some of them, parents killed right in their presence. Some of them went out before they came back. There was nothing they could call the family again. And this was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of time, we would move forward. But the account details here, any money slotted here, goes to nowhere except for the SEAL program. Scholarship initiative for the less privileged. It does not go to the Peace and Unity Convention and other initiatives under one Ummah. It goes straight to sponsoring a child in a school. That's why we have the account details on our screen here. And what a better investment. A lot of times we hear that the companions, the prophet said the companions are people we cannot meet. No matter how hard we try, we can't get close to them. Why? The day I pondered on this particular fact, because it sounded a bit, ah, ah, why is this, why can't we get close to them? They are our teachers. Whatever we learn about the religion they taught us. So how can you match up with people that have trained more than 14 generations, more than 20 generations? They keep on passing the knowledge from one generation to another generation. And for school owners that are here, you can help us also give scholarship to some of these students. We have some schools that are already doing that. Schools like Gleason uh, Academy, schools like, uh, schools like, uh, subhanAllah, it's my school. Schools like Great Heights Academy and many and some other schools like that, that if you are a school owner, you can also join this course for the betterment of our country and also for the betterment of our religion. One of the reasons why we can never meet up with these companions is because they transmitted knowledge to us. Let us also invest in a child and that child gives birth to children. Those children give birth to children and would have changed the course of an entire generation that keeps on going down, down, and down. May Almighty Allah aid all of us financially. The fifth session for today will be on the topic, Early Muslims' Personalities and Their Inspiration to the Ummah with Their Roles in Changing Global Narratives, Putting into Cognizance Technology, Finance, Leadership, Gender, Economy, ETC. Um, it's been very, very interesting experience, alhamdulillah. But I'm saying, you talked about the silk, right? 
And as a journalist, I was watching for my ends there. Please, can you help me get um, Rabu Baka? I think that's his name. One of the soup recipients. Rabu Baka, I think you should be at the backstage. Amza, mashallah. Amza, mashallah. You know, while those brothers were talking, I was looking at them and I had good people all over me. And why? The first question that came to my mind is, Allah Akbar, this is our donation in action. Subhanallah. I'm sorry I'm putting you on the spot. Ramza, right? Barakallah, okay, nice meeting you. All this much, inshallah. Ramza, I would like to ask you, when did you become a beneficiary? What's your precise date? Early 15, 16. 16, how old are you now? So it's about six years ago. Now, let me ask you, six years ago and now, if you didn't get this scholarship, where do you think you, what do you think you'd be doing right now? I don't know where I'm going to be right now. Because I lost my father at the end of living with my family in a difficult financial situation. So, thanks to the one in that. Don't take one to my head. What do you think you'd be doing? Probably riding your chair. I would have found a handwork thing. But you will not find a further university. Yes. Atek Beer. What are we waiting for? This is Sodaka Sujaria for us. 90,000 Naira for a year is something that some of us spend on buying food. Some of us using big cars. 90,000 Naira cannot fill our car for one week. Some of us who have children in university, we pay times 10 of this per term or per session. But this is something that will be there for you now and forever the evening law. So why not go on to that account and do something for the sake of your tomorrow? Not for the sake of me, not for the sake of anybody, but for the sake of Allah. Because there is an addition of the that says from Law Ali Rasulam. He says that on the day of Kiyama, some people will come to Allah and Allah will ask them, while I was in need on earth, I came to you, you did not respond. And they'll be like, Allah, we never saw you. And Allah said, you saw my slave. You saw the orphans. They were hungry. They needed help to go to school. You never did anything. My brother, Barakallahu alayhi And I hope by the time I leave here, inshallah, you will have done a lot for your sake. We don't want, I don't, don't see yourself as knowing or being part of it. But just do this for the sake of Allah and you will see your investment just like this. Wallahi, I feel so good and I thank Allah that I'm part of this process. I have done my own this year, I've done last year, and of course to do it, inshallah. So you can also do the same thing. We allow the world you abundantly as we invest in this project. Allah my name. Alright, inshallah, because Allah is still the peace and unity convention holding at ICC Center in Abuja, the tenth year anniversary and the eighth of its kind, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, let's do maintain it out while we wait for our shake, inshallah. Are we ready? Let's bring out our phones. Okay. You are still sending money to the account. Mashallah, Allah of you. Why is it I'm seeing more of sisters working on their phone than brothers? Is it our brothers we don't want to go to Jannah or we have done it already? Okay, mashallah. Barakallah of you. All right, that is the, um, the, the back, the, the QR code on the screen. What's happening now? Why are you changing it? So you can scan the code, inshallah. And if you want to use it, just go to www.menti.com. And have five three eight seven six eight zero inshallah. Okay, please put an O to that for this little welcome.